is my cat, Akamatsu. Akamatsu now is six years old. When he was two years old, unfortunately, he was hit by a vehicle and paralyzed halfway down the back, um, which was bad news. We took him to the vet and the vet said he would maybe have three days to live, gave him some painkillers. But, you know, a week went by and he started to feel a little bit better. You know, he was definitely still paralyzed and would just slide around on the floor. But, you know, his appetite was coming back. He was breathing more easily. And now, four years later, he's still living a very vibrant, happy life. Uh, I'll show you what we do to help him live comfortably and also give you ideas of maybe what you can do if your cat or your pet gets injured uh, severely in some way. Um, you'll see that you have other options than maybe just putting that animal to sleep. I'll, I'll try to take Akamatsu out um, once a day for a walk here in the park. I use this wheelchair which is from a company in the United States called Eddie's Wheels. And I sent them uh, Akamatsu's measurements and uh, they, they custom made this just for him. It's super simple. I take out the pin, it's here, pin, open up that one piece of metal. There you go. I put his two legs through the little holes in the back. Close the bar. Insert the pin, he's good to go. There you go, buddy. And one little special note is that when he's on the grass, his rear uh, paws are fine. But if he's walking on sidewalk or pavement, you have to protect his paws, otherwise they'll scratch on the hard surface. So sometimes people put little Velcro straps and attach the rear legs to the bar here. Or you could find little booties, cat booties, and put those on his rear legs. And that protects, um, put them on his rear feet and that will protect his feet. If I see a dog running up to him, which could be dangerous, I'll pick him up very quickly uh, to protect him from you know, the jaws of the dog. Um, also, he can go surprisingly fast in this thing. And I've seen him run towards the street and I've had to pretty much go at full speed to catch him. So you really do have to be careful. Twice a day, I have to empty out his bladder, and I thought I would show you that quickly too. You can take your animal to a vet, and they can show you where you have to put your hand and how much pressure you have to put on the bladder. And it took me like a few weeks before I actually figured it out. Anyway, once I did figure it out, good boy, um, it's very easy to do. Maybe it just takes a couple minutes each time I do it. And I try to do it two or three times a day. It's interesting because it's this kind of uh, knowledge that you, you can't really describe. You know, it's all based on feeling. So I don't know that if there's much I can tell you. Um, I know that you need the right kind of pressure and you need to put it at the right position and then it, it's a bit delayed, so it takes maybe a few seconds before you see the reaction and you see urine actually coming out. So that's why it's a little bit tricky, because you might be doing it right, and at the beginning, um, nothing's happening. But if you're patient and you wait a few seconds, you'll see that urine actually comes out. And so what I'm doing now, uh, after he pees and then he stops, I, I readjust my hand a little bit to find the bladder. It's like a little tiny balloon right near his tail and in his abdomen. Um, so I'll, I'll readjust my hand to find that balloon and then try to put pressure around it. 
I don't have to put a lot of pressure. Yeah, you don't want to hurt your animal either. So it might have been, I would say, maybe about eight hours since I last expressed him. That would be my guess. So, you know, he did have quite a bit. And he's such a good cat now. He's so patient when I do this. You know. that's, that's He knows the routine. to get everything out. It takes a little bit of time. I don't know if you want to get a close-up of this. <laughs> and one thing you'll notice too, like I, I, my hands have stayed completely clean. So I'm holding up his tail so that he doesn't pee on his tail. And then I'm holding him in his belly. And I'm just kind of aiming him a little bit. Fold it up a few times, just so it doesn't soak through and touch my fingers. And I just kind of clean it up a little bit. But one thing I discovered, which is kind of cool, is if I rub vigorously at the base of his spine and the beginning of his tail, that will uh, stimulate him to have a bowel movement. And I discovered that because uh, near the beginning, when he was first paralyzed, I would massage his legs a lot, and you know, with the hopes of maybe having him gain some mobility. Uh, that didn't really happen, but I noticed when I would give him a massage in this area that uh, he would start to uh, go poo sometimes right away. So I'll do that every time I express his bladder, just in case there's something there. And when you're really comfortable with it, you can actually feel in the abdomen like a little hard bump, which is a stool, and um, then you know like there's kind of something in the chamber, so to speak, and, and then I'll, I'll definitely give him some uh, stimulation on that pressure point. But right now, there's nothing I can feel, so I'm just showing you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it doesn't have to go poo today. And that's it! So I do that, and then I try to keep very clean, so there was the one hand I used to, to wipe him with the toilet paper. So I just keep that hand free, and then with the other hand, Turn on the water, get the soap, wash my hands, and then at the very end, uh, I'll wipe the toilet seat just with a bit of rubbing alcohol. Wipe the seat, all very glamorous work. Keep that toilet seat pristine, and then. <laughs> Uh, yeah, if he happens to go poo at the very end, I'll just put like a little drop of bleach in the toilet after just to, uh, you know, maybe sterilize the toilet a bit. We just found out recently that he's been diagnosed with cancer. About a week ago, he was actually almost uh, on, uh, he was almost at the end again. You know, the vets thought he might even have just two or three minutes to live. So, um, you know, he was having problems breathing and he was losing a lot of weight, but with a lot of uh, intense care over the last week, we brought him back from the brink and he has a chance of living between maybe three months and two years now with regular medication. Um, it's kind of a chemotherapy uh, that, that they give to cats and apparently cats respond very well to it. You may be wondering why you see a few little patches of skin on him and that's from the recent work that's been done for um, his cancer therapy. So he had a little bit of fur shaved off on the forearms for intravenous and then on the stomach in the abdomen region, he had some shaved off to uh, for ultrasound. We're just waiting for that hair to grow back. We're gonna keep on helping him, you know. Um, I, I don't see any reason not to, other than the fact that it's, it's such a big bill to pay. Yes! Yay!
paralyzed cat with cancer. <laughs> That's not stopping him. <laughs> Good. Oh, look at that, some delicious grass. He's a fighter and we're helping And he has a nice time with you with both yeah, of you. Yeah. Because one great thing about having an animal like this is that it, it lets me talk to strangers and meet people I would never meet. So it, that's true. Faced with the choice of what to do with my cat, I listened to my feelings, and my feelings were pretty clear that I should try to help him as much as possible. And after he became paralyzed, uh, we became even closer, which is interesting because he started to become more reliant on me. So he wasn't the little baby cat that would jump around and chase after things all the time. Like he, he would have to look at me and communicate with me tell me what he needed, you know, if he wanted the door open to the balcony so he could go out, he'd look at me and then try to lead me over to the door. Or, you know, sometimes one thing that's really cute is if his ear is itchy, he'll come up to me and then like show me his ear, like kind of twitch it. And I mean, right away I'm like, oh, there's something wrong with his ear. I'll, and I scratch his ear and he, he's like, ah, thank you. Because he can't, you know, scratch anymore with his back legs always receptive to each other, always looking at each other, trying to communicate non-verbally, but even sometimes verbally now, you know, because I find there's such a range in the way that he'll make sounds, and you know, not every sound is a simple meow. Um, like if he's kind of upset about something, it will be a quick meow. Or, you know, if he wants a treat, it'll be more like a you know, so there's this, this vocabulary that he has, and I try to <laughs> talk back to him in the same vocabulary. So if I'm mad, I'll be like, meh. Or, you know, he, he gives me like a meow, please. I'll be like, meow. You know, so we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll engage in this dialogue. And what's funny too, like, he even, I think, knows what a whisper is. Um, because sometimes at night he'll, he'll be kind of loud with his meows, like asking for something, and my roommate might be asleep, so I'll be like, shh. And then he'll just kind of mouth the meow, like he'll be like, you know, it, it's just been very natural for me to want to help him, and I think as well, he, he helps me, you know, he, he helps me stay um, kind of tender and, and loving and caring, you know. I, I, you know, he brings out that in me when I'm around him, so I, I, I'm very grateful for that. I mean, he's a good friend, I'm not, I'm not going to be like, you know what, that's, sorry, that, that's too expensive. I would rather take a trip to Hawaii this winter. You know, I, no, I gotta help him, you know, I, as much as I can. And I feel good about that. Yeah, so that's why I'm doing it all. <laughs> Any time we get to go for a little bike ride, you'll see. He keeps his head stuck out. Um, loves to loves to feel the wind in his hair. <laughs> okay. Hopefully we can film this. All right. See you later.
Hey 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 Thank you.